birthday in Door County. Question. Pinch of salt? Pinch of salt. Oh my gosh. Look at all that corn. The tradition that started in Door County many years ago when they had the loggers up here clear cutting the virgin timber, making room for creating farmers' fields, sending a lot of lumber down to down to Chicago, I'm sure other areas too. And my great grandpa was actually one of those that came up from Germany. He landed in New York, then he went to Chicago, and then he got sent up here to become a lumberjack. So that's how I got my roots in Door County. And uh, so over the years, they took the Scandinavian way of fill in a pot with water under an open fire and throw whatever was readily available back then. It was a local uh, a lake trout, which is still, we still have lake trout up here, but it's just not as plentiful as it once was. And we use now the uh, locally caught whitefish, which comes from the Weeborg family that's based out of Gills Rock. They have three sets of nets on this side of the island. It's uh, uh, a set in Egg Harbor, one at Chambers Island, which is only like three, three and a half miles away. And then there's another set in between Ellison Bay and Gills Rock. And so uh, as this tradition went on, the farmers got done, or the, the lumberjacks got done clear cutting all the bird timber, they all became farmers, and then this tradition was carried on through the local churches and civic associations. They use it as a fundraiser to do once or twice a year, you know, to raise the funds. And then over time, in like 60, 61, I think it was, the Viking Grill decided to do it on a regular basis open to the public. And two years ago, the Viking Grill sold. I went up to the new owners, asked them what they're gonna do with the cattle and the equipment. They said they're not doing fish boils, so we did a little barter. So this is actually equipment from the Viking Grill in Allison Bay, living on here in Fish Creek. Probably not the original one from 61, but definitely got some age to it. <laughs> and then after the Viking Grill started the fish boils, the uh, White Gull Inn started doing it and a few other restaurants over the years. In the 70s, my mom and dad used to own the Edgewater. We had the Edgewater Diner, which is now called the old post office. And that's why I got my background in doing fish boils because when you're old enough to, strong enough to lift that basket out of pot, they turn you into a boil master. <laughs> they still let you do the dishes on the kitchen. <laughs> and so when my wife and I decided to turn this into a restaurant, I knew I was gonna do the fish boil because I understood the concept. I like the roots, the history, it's very unique to this area. But I also like cooking spice and flavor, so I decided I was going to do the traditional, and then I was going to do one with a little more seasoning. I started studying the way the Cajuns cook, and started doing little country bowls at my house. And on the 4th and 10th, when I was trying to do my own spices, I got the shaker. When you sit down at your table, that little red shaker is a season I use on Cajun boil night. It's got really good flavor. It's not too spicy. It's not going to get you sweating or anything. Um, and when we were doing the experiment at the house, on the fourth one, it came out really good. We're like, we should just do this as a future item on a Saturday night, something unique to Door County. And it turned into two nights and three nights now. We might go four nights next year on it. We'll see. Um, and then there's a squeeze bottle at your table too. That is what's called my kicking Cajun sauce. That's got a really good flavor, a little bit of kick as well, but uh, it's, it's, it's good on virtually everything. Maybe not the cornbread, but I had a little lady that I said, maybe not the cornbread. She tried it and she said it's good on the cornbread. So I'll take her word for it. Um, if anybody's interested in the, the, the Cajun boil, we do that on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and that comes with jumbo shrimp, potatoes, onions, corn on the cob, andouille sausage, celery, mushrooms, garlic, and now we added sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts to the lineup. 
and every, all those ingredients get cooked on a, a, a propane burner. And um, and I do build a fire just as a ceremonial thing. That's really serve purpose. Now. <laughs> Background. And so all the ingredients go in this oversized bowl. I take some of the broth that's created during the boiling process because it's packed full of flavor. And we pour that over. You get cornbread on the side, cherry pie for dessert. We also offer a six ounce lobster tail that I cook right in the pot as well. Or normally steam doesn't have a whole lot of flavor bars comes out of the pot with really good flavor. And we do the same thing 5.30, 7.30. But we're getting ready to do what's called the boil over. And the boil over, most people think it's just for a photo op, but it actually serves a purpose. So when the fish is, is is in the pot boiling, the, the, the oils from the fish come to the surface and you get might get a little ash for the burning wood uh, on top of the water and that that heat will get the water to boil over and clean that top layer off before we hoist all the food out through the with all that fish oil to the top. And if you're taking a photo about three, four seconds in is when the flames reach the maximum height of your videotape, it doesn't matter, you can just screenshot wherever you like afterwards. Anybody have any questions? Is the white fish really plentiful or are you losing? Well, we've only been open for a year and three months now. So we've got, the only thing that's really a challenge is the wind. Because if, if we get like four or five windy days, they, they can't get out. So that's usually like the thing we keep our eyes on. So, but if... Um, but there's plenty of fish. Yeah, there's plenty okay. of fish. I mean, everybody's going to get fed tonight. Yeah, yeah. Catching fish yeah, I mean, it, even back in the, the 70s when we were doing it, it, we never ever had an issue with fish. Okay, wow. Yeah. Winter, they um, they uh, go out still in the winter, but they do most of the pulling on the other side because it doesn't freeze over on the other side. So they pull the nets on the other side, uh, on the Lake Michigan side. But there's not, a, they, they don't have the pressure of producing as much as they do in the summer. There's, there's a lot of restaurants that go through a lot of white fish. So we're getting ready to do the boil over. You're going to tell us. So I can start well, I'll let you know. Okay. Let's see you grab my uh, my fuel or my fire starter over there. Everybody ready? Yeah, Locked and loaded. Mm -hmm. All right, fire in the hole. Bird. All right, we'll give you a look at the way they uh, turned out here, and you'll know why they call them whitefish. <laughs> your table there's going to be a couple little two little utensils that we're starting to uh, experiment with they're called sporks so made out of bamboo they make it easy for the deboning i recommend peeling the skin off because after it gets boiled comes out of the pot the skin comes off very easy all right okay, perfect What's that? Oh, I'll peel the skin off first. But those two little sporks, if you grab one in each hand, it makes it a little, they're easier tools to use to uh, to uh, do your surgical removal of the skin and then and then pull the skin, then pull the meat off. The tails are the easiest to debone because it just has...